it's me, Rebecca, from Zero Cut Crafts. This is an emergency. So, you know when you find something amazing and you have to tell somebody about it? This is me telling you. So, I made an order on Amazon.ca for 10 balls. It comes in a pack of 10. 10 balls of Yonky Monkey Bamboo Cotton Yarn. Just focus. Bamboo Cotton Yarn. Premium quality. So, I was texting with Amanda Panda, Obsessive Crochet Lady. I'll link her below. And when I, oh, I was just processing some yarn to get ready for dyeing. When I opened this bag, I gasped out loud. This yarn, if you could see it, let's see if it'll focus. Mm, there we go. So, so soft. So I was trying to think of something to compare it to. The closest I can get, without the plasticky feel, is you know, when you open a brand new Barbie doll, and you take that little plastic tie off of her hair that holds it perfectly in place in the box, and it just falls in a cascade of silkiness. That's what it feels like. Silky Barbie hair, but not plasticky, just silky. This yarn is 70% bamboo, 30% cotton. These little balls are 50 grams and 210 meters. They say the diameter is 1.2 millimeters. I'm gonna call it a one weight. Maybe, let's see, maybe a two. That's real thin. So I don't buy yarn unless I can dye it. Can't dye it, don't buy it, right? So I'm going to prep this. I have one already done up, right here. I am prepping half of the pack, five skeins in cakes and five in pinks. So let's do it together while we chat and I'll take you through the process. Because everybody loves a dye video, right? That's what you've been saying in the comments. So let's get started. So I have, sorry, I've got my ball winder attached to a board so I can hold it on my lap. We're working in a tight confined space. So ball winder, me, got it. So I stick my fingers through both of the holes so I, they meet in the middle and then I find a loose thread, pull it out, did we get an end? Yes. So I'm just going to gently, without pulling too much, just going to loosen up till I find the end. There we go. I'm going to wrap this around the spiral wire there. There's two slits. I'm going to put them in and make sure I catch it on the first round. Then I'm going to tension this. Hold on to it. While I turn, watching my ball of yarn to make sure it doesn't clump up. Which it's doing. So I kind of hold it with the back. Mm -hmm. Hold it with the back of my hand so it bumps against there. While I turn, I just keep light, even tension. I'm not holding the yarn back. I don't even know if you can hear me. I'm not holding the yarn back. I'm just guiding it in. I'm feeling the yarn between my fingers to make sure there's no knots. And I'm just winding the ball up. I'll be right back. Okay, so yarn is bald. 
So I'm going to put my two fingers on top of here. I'm gonna stick my thumbs underneath the whole ball of yarn and just start loosen, like pulling it up. Make sure you get all the threads under there. We're just going to lift it off. Okay. Um, it's so soft. I can't even like the smush factor on this. It's wonderful. Now, the next step for me, I'm going to, because of the fiber content, bamboo and cotton are both plant fibers, I am going to soak them in about 10 cups of water, half of a cup of salt with no iodine. So I use kosher salt and warm water just to help the salt dissolve. I will soak these completely underwater overnight and I'll see you back here tomorrow to start dyeing. Hi. So I figure while I'm inking up the yarn, I might as well show you how to use a nitty knot. So I just fished the end out of the center of the ball and then this is a nitty knot. It has, it makes a T, and then as you travel up here, this one is offset. So this one and this one make an X if you look at it this way. So I always start on the same end, this end. I wish I had more room to go back and show you better, but I hold the yarn here on this handle just like this and I'm going to go over the top, under, over, under. And you just get into a rhythm and you just follow the path. And it just rocks back and forth as you wrap it. So essentially what you're doing is making one giant loop with many strands over and over and over. And the offset arms are going to hold it out in less space. So you can also take a yarn swift, which is the tool that kind of looks like an umbrella, and clamp it to your table, spin it, keep your tension on the yarn, and just wind it up that way as well. You don't need a nitty knotty, but this way is easier and faster. So I'm gonna wind this up, and then I'll show you how to take it off. So this Nitty Naughty that I have is, I believe, 174 centimeters, which, oddly enough, my Yarn Swift is only 157, maybe it's 173 and 157. What that means is this, the hanks that I make, the big loops of yarn, that I need to make to dye with are slightly too big for my Swift. So ideally I'd get either a smaller Nitty Naughty or a larger Swift. But this Nitty Naughty is an antique and I enjoy working with it. It's sturdy, it's strong, and I own it already. And the Yarn Swift, again, I own it already, so I just gotta make two. Well, I'm gonna pause you guys, keep going with this, and be back in a minute. Hi, okay, so I have hanged up all of my yarn on the Nitty Naughty, and I'm gonna show you what to do next. So this is the end, and it lines up to this one. So I'm going to take that yarn, I'm trying to make it so you can see it. I'm going to split it in two, 
making sure I'm holding this end in one of those. I have pieces of just cotton yarn and I'm going to butterfly it. So I'm going to go over. You're just making a figure eight. And you're going to make it what I'm doing. I swear I know what I'm doing. That's my other end. Okay. So you're going to make a figure eight. And then you don't want to tie this tight. You, If you tie your ties too tight, you will get resist on your yarn. So you'll have a lighter spot where the dye can't reach. So you should, there should be lots of room. It's just holding your yarn organized. So I usually put four ties on a skein of yarn, on a hank. Put four ties on a hank of yarn. Um, I tie both of my ends first. If they happen to end at the same spot, you can tie them together, but I don't love doing that. So where we're tying the end, the ties loosely, if it's too close to this end, it will come out. You can always suck it back in, but it's just easier to make sure your ties are a little ways from the ends of your yarn. So my two ties, you can see one is here and one is here. So those are really close together. So I'm going to space out. So one tie here, I'm going to go down and I'm going to tie one at the bottom here. So obviously you'd like to do it ideally in quarters, but that isn't always possible if your ends are too close together, which you don't have control over. So I'm just tying another tie on down here. Then I've got all of this side up and down the other side without a tie on it. So I'm going to go right where this bar is, and I'm going to see if I can hang this here. I'm going to tie one tie right down where the bar is. So these will keep your yarn from getting tangled while you're dyeing it. It's essential. As well as the four ties, I also add a zip tie. I don't have one where I can reach it, so I can't show you. But you can get reusable zip ties, and I've also figured out how to hack it so I can take the old ones off. The ties are on. I'll put the zip tie on um, when I go to soak them. But all of the ends have a stopper on them, with the exception of one. So we're going to grab our yarn. It's going to be a bit of a tight fit, but that's why this is arced in an arch. So we're going to slip this off of the end and keep a hold of it. Take this end off the other side and just lift the knot, the knitting knot out. So now I've got one big loop of yarn. One side to the other side. I'm going to hold this one steady. And I'm going to twist this, doesn't matter which way you twist it, but I'm just going to twist and twist and twist until it can't twist anymore. Then I fold it in half, let go, and it twists up. Now, I'm going to feed two fingers through where I was holding it, grab the other side, pull it through, and you've got a hank of yarn. So I will put a zip tie through here, making sure I catch all the strands, and soak it overnight.
I've got some pots on the stove that are heating up. They're just plain tap water. And in the oven, I have a tray with some water and salt. So we're just gonna let these heat up while we get started. To get us started, I have the cotton that we soaked last night in the cakes. I've got a bus pan, I guess. Um, it's just a metal tray that goes in the oven and a steamer pan on top of it. It just sits in. This bottom pan, we have found out, leaks. So I have the other one in the oven. This one will just catch any little trips that happen. I'm going to recreate oven's ready. I'm going to recreate a, a ball of yarn that I made last week that turned out really gorgeous and I'm going to make it on a different base. So this time we're using 100% cotton. It, last week I used cotton with a Stellina in it. Alright, I have gloves on and I've got my cup set up. So I'm going to do a rainbow. So I have my cup set up. I'm going with cherry red, sunshine orange, ye lemon yellow, kelly green, royal blue, purple, and indigo. So I'm going to put a half of a teaspoon of, um, of the red dye in each of the cups with the exception of the lemon yellow, which is going to need a full tablespoon. they work dirt cheap. The only thing is when you put them into your dye, squeeze it, keep the dye up and that way it doesn't flick out. I just turned this over. 
Okay, now I'm going to get one of the cakes. I'm going to start with a big one. So I'm taking one of the die cakes, the cotton cakes, and you squeeze out as much of the water as you can because we're going to be adding quite a bit of liquid back again. I'm just going to pump it back up a bit, put it down. I just, I can't get over how soft it is. I hope it doesn't disappoint me today and not take the dye. with red and in my mind I'm going to divide them up into seven. This one is spreading. You'll notice the difference when I add it to the cotton. This stays exactly where I put it. So I'm going to have to be a bit more careful with the, with the bamboo cotton. I want the dye to go all the way through my yarn. It doesn't matter if it mixes in the middle, but I will dye right down the side and that will also help me when I flip it over to get the divisions equal.
So this little one, this is the Yankee Monkey, and so is this. As this one took me about 45 minutes to untangle because they're still damp, this one's going to dry a little bit longer in the cake. But this is how they turned out. You can see there's some white where the dye didn't reach the center of the ball, but I like it anyways. And if we zoom in, you can see the sheen on it. It's so beautiful and still soft even when it's wet. So these are off to be hung up to dry.